Yeah, yeah, yes indeed, we back on another episode of Chill Will Talks. I'm your host, Chill Will 174, East Side, New York City, 2 and 5 line, you know how we do. Uh, before I get into this, uh, my boy Jay hit me up, he said I need to have some, um, I should have had a Heineken or something, so today, I came with the Hennessy today, we gonna do this, hopefully that make it a little better, you know what I mean? But we gonna get into the story though, uh... Uh, this is 90s, uh, high school days, can't remember what year, but we're going to get into the story. Um, give you the backdrop to the story real quick. Back in these days, my moms used to get home at 5 p.m. every day on the dot like clockwork, just to give you that, give you that before we get into it, so, because that goes into the story. So, it was about 3 o'clock, came home, used to go to Monroe High School, cross the bridge. Came home, was in the Bronx, came home, 3 o'clock, 3, 3 p.m. on the dot. You know, I was in the crib, a homie knocked on my door. Now, this homie, he used to be from, like, 176 in the concourse. I met him through another homie of mine that lived over there. He used to be in my neighborhood, 174, so that's how we know him. That's the connection. So, he comes to the crib about 3 p.m. this day. Knocks on my door, yo, what's up, man? What's going on? Yo, can I use your bathroom? So I'm like, all right, cool, because mom's going to get home for two hours. I was in the crib by myself. So I'm like, all right, cool. Showed him where the bathroom was, you know what I'm saying? I'm in the, I'm in the living room. He goes to the bathroom. I hear him scream. So I'm like, yo, what's going on? Like, you all right back there? So he's like, nah, son, I'm not doing good. So I'm like, what the fuck is going on? So I go to the bathroom. I'm not going to door. I'm like, yo, what's good with you? He's like, yo, son, I'm hit, I'm hit. So I, I opened the bathroom door. He's laying on the floor, laying on the floor by the toilet. He's laying on the floor. It's like his pants was halfway down a little bit. But he's laying there. He's like, yo, I'm hit. I'm hit. So I'm like, yo, what are you talking about? He's like, yo, I think I shot myself in the balls or whatever. But I ain't see no blood, though. You know what I'm saying? But he's laying there. He's he's like, yo, I can't get up. I can't move, this and that. I ain't know he had a gun on him. He had a 9 millimeter gun on him. You know what I'm saying? Or whatever. I didn't know at this time. Turns out. When he was on my way, he was on his way coming across the 174th Street Bridge. He went to take a leak. The gun went off, ejected, shot him. He didn't know if he had got shot in the balls or the leg. So when he came to my house, that's why he wanted to use the bathroom because he wanted to find out, but he didn't tell me. So I, now I don't know what to do. I'm like, yo, what you want me to do? Like, yo. So he like, yo, call 911. Now, mind you, I never called 911 in my life. I don't know how to call 911. I'm like, what? Call 911? So... I'm like, all right, I'm going to call 911, you know, whatever. So I go to the phone, I call 911. Now, mind you, the clock is ticking now because I told you moms get home at 5 o'clock. It might have been 3.20 now. clock is ticking. I get on the phone, I call 911. Um, they asking me what's wrong. I don't know how to explain to somebody, to the operator, that somebody shot themselves in the ball. So I'm trying to explain it to the lady, but she keep asking me, what? What happened? Who did what? And I'm like, he shot himself in the balls or the groin. I'm like, I don't know. How to, how to, the terminology. So she's like, okay, you know, she's going to send somebody. So now I, I picks him up and I'm carrying him to the living room. I lay him on the couch. Mind you, my mom's had a white leather couch. Why did I do that, right? Thank God no blood spilled on the couch or whatever, but why did I put him there, right? But I laid him there because that's the closest to the door, right? So he, um, he had the gun on him, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, oh, shit. I looked, I heard like the, the sirens outside. I looked out the window, the police showed up first. So I'm like, oh shit, he got this gun. I got to hide this gun, you know, because they don't know what happened. So I took the gun, I hid it, put it in my room or whatever. It's a nine millimeter, whatever. So the police come first. They knock on the door. They come in, they see him laying on the couch. What's going on? So I'm explaining to them, I don't know. He came here like this. You know, I don't know what's going on. So they talking to him, this and that. It's like 3.40 now. Clock is ticking. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Now, I hear the sirens for the ambulance. They come, you know, all types of things. Now, now I got a house full of people now because this dude is shot. He's laying in my living room. And I'm like, all I'm worried about is my mom's going to be home at 5 p.m. She never misses. Y'all got to get this nigga out of here. Like, you know what I mean? And, you know, they all came, you know, strapped him up, put him on the bed, the gurney, whatever that, is, that shit is. But, you know, they took him up out of there. And when they took him, they left his pants. And dude had this fly ass belt in his pants, so I ain't gonna lie, I took the belt because that belt, that belt was fly. You know, it was a fly, it was a dope ass belt. So I took the belt. It was a fly belt back then. I don't remember the name of it, whatever. 
So they took him, took him to the, you know, took him to the hospital or whatever. Moms came. They left about 10 minutes before 5. And mom walked through that door, 5 p.m. Moms never knew what happened. She didn't know a thing because by the time she got there, everybody was gone. You know what I'm saying? It was, it was a crazy day. But the story continues because later on that day, I come outside and I tell my homies what happened. You know, I'm like, yo. So I told my boy, when <coughs> I told my homies, my homies about the gun. And my man was like, yo, let me get that. So I'm like, nah, you know, that, you know, niggas in the hood, we get hands on our gun. That shit is out, you know. So I'm like, yo, that's me, bro. Nah, you ain't getting that. So he was like, nah, I got to go to my shorty house later. You know, how hell is crazy. You know how, what time it is over there. You know, I'm going to need that. So I'm like, all right, you know, whatever. I'll let you hold the shit. So I gave it to him, you know what I'm saying? And come to find out, the pin inside the gun didn't work. So the gun didn't fire. You know what I'm saying? But niggas in the hood, we don't care. If shit don't work or not, we still gonna do what we gonna do. We gotta pump fake with the gun. Whatever we gotta do, we gonna do it. So that's what happened with that. So that, of course, that gun disappeared. That gun ended up in another situation later on. And of course, that gun disappears. Um, I hadn't seen dude that got shot for a couple of years, but I recently I heard I think he's in jail for murder. Or he went to jail for murder. You know what I'm saying? He might be home now. I'm not sure. But um, that's just, that's one of the stories I'm gonna tell, or oh, today that's the story I'm gonna tell. So, uh, it, it's quick and fast, you know. what I mean, it probably wasn't a glamorous story, but it happened, man. That that's something that happened real quick. But it is what it is, man. I'll be back with another. One.